The day for Battlefish Farm's harvest crew starts early. They've been waiting 18 months for this pond of catfish to be ready. Bill Battle, a native of Tunica, Mississippi, and owner of Battlefish Farms, has raised catfish since he can remember. My first recollection of fish farming was uh, riding in the back of a car, watching the little sack fry we had in a bag to bring to the first pond we ever built. And, and, uh, and I guess that was about 1969 or 70. And uh, from there, went on to run the hatcheries and, and, uh, and worked on a fish farm every holiday and summer vacation that everybody else went to Florida, I went to the fish farm. Battle, a Catfish Farmers of America board member, says raising and processing fish at his operation takes up every one of the 24 hours available in a day and requires the help of some 150 employees. Britton Hatcher is the Mississippi Farm Bureau's Aquaculture Commodity Advisor. Catfish in the wild are bottom feeding fish, but the way I try to explain catfish in a farm raised setting, it's just like cattle. Grass fed beef has a different taste than does feedlot. Catfish are the same. In the wild, they're gonna be a little bit different. If you ever watch a catfish being fed, they go out there and throw feed on the water and our fish are just churning all along the top. They're not at the bottom. Battle Fish Farm's 100 ponds produce nearly 10 million pounds of fish every year. When the catfish are ready, a crew harvests the bounty with nets that allow the smaller fish to swim through, letting them grow to a size that turns a profit. Pride of the Pond Battle's processing facility opened in the early 1980s and runs four days per week, depending on demand and the number of fish harvested in nets or purchased from other producers. U.S. farm-raised catfish production soared in the 70s, topping out in the early 2000s. But after foreign imports from trading partners like Vietnam and China, higher production costs, and a weak domestic economy, contributed to total catfish pond acreage falling nearly 65 percent. Today, Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas account for 90 percent of all U.S. production, which tipped the scales at 315 million pounds in 2015, nearly a third of total domestic consumption. Over the past four and a half decades, producers have encountered many changes. Battle and the nearly 185 other catfish producers, concentrated in southern states, are facing some of their greatest challenges in the history of the industry. My father was really involved in the industry and he came home one day and said, look, the malachite that you're using, you got to get rid of it. If the FDA or whoever finds it on the farm, they'll shut, shut us down. You know, it still mystifies me why other countries can use all those banned items and send the fish in here for us to eat and for us to feed our children. You know, if they catch me using it in this country, it's doomsday for me and I don't want to use it. I mean, I want a product that's good for me and good for my kids. I probably eat more catfish than anybody. Prior to March 2016, catfish imports and domestic production were inspected and monitored by the Food and Drug Administration. Years of lobbying in Congress resulted in catfish being classified as a meat in the 2008 Farm Bill. After nearly eight years, inspection authority passed to USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. Under the newly implemented program, 100% of catfish are inspected and regulated where previously only 2% of all imported catfish and catfish-like product were inspected. After only four months of enforcement, Senate Republicans, led by John McCain of Arizona, voted to end the inspection process handled by FSIS and return regulation to the FDA. Several catfish industry members went to Washington, D.C. just days before Congress recessed in August to rally U.S. House members to vote down the resolution. However, the legislation never made it to the floor. Hatcher, like many others, emphasizes the issue is about food safety and industry image. A fear I have, one batch comes in, gets a lot of people sick, they're going to paint this industry with a broad brush. Nobody's going to want to eat catfish again because they're going to say, that catfish made me sick, when they don't understand that this was from China or Vietnam or wherever it comes from, and this is U.S. farm-raised catfish. Many of those wishing to return inspection to the FDA say this is a political agenda brought forth by a small group of Southern Catfish industry members rather than a food safety issue. 
The National Fisheries Institute, a nonprofit organization made up of importers, exporters, producers, processors, and restaurants, among others, voiced opposition to the change in procedure and support lawmakers who want the mandate repealed. The reality is the folks who will be hurt the most by this in the long run are U.S. ag exports. Because what's likely to happen is if this program goes forward, there will be a WTO lawsuit from Vietnam or from China, and the U.S. will lose that lawsuit. And when they do lose that lawsuit, there will be retaliatory tariffs placed on U.S. ag exports. And the reason that U.S. ag exports will be targeted is that we don't export any catfish. Not a single whisker of catfish is exported from this country, so there is nothing in the catfish realm to retaliate against. So the real losers here are going to be corn, beef, soy, cotton, those type of exports. As the legislation wrangling continues in Congress, Battle, like other producers, know they will continue to face opposition from those in Washington and foreign competition. And I told somebody not long ago, old boy trying to raise catfish in Mississippi never thought he'd be, they need him to go to Washington and knock on doors and. Uh, the House of Congress. I mean, it takes a lot to put fish in a box these days. It, it really does. For Market to Market, I'm Delaney Howell.